Well, hello. Here is my Senna INC helmet. Uh, this is the Momentum INC. So it's a helmet that I've covered off briefly in a video, actually the last video I posted. And I did basically an unboxing and a quick review from a few short rides. Well, now that I've had the helmet on my head for extended periods of time over a couple months, I have a, probably a more in-depth review. What I've decided to do is to list off all the pros and all the cons and then my final sort of verdict and, uh, and do it kind of in a point form, nice and quick, so you can get my opinion on this thing. So first things first, the fit and finish of this helmet is very good. Um, it's clearly painted composite of some sort, um, but not molded, it's painted, it's very nice, nice glossy finish. Um, smooth, not orange peel, nothing like that. Um, the helmet's actually light considering what it has inside it. Um, and uh, the helmet's comfortable. The helmet actually has a long oval shape, very, very similar to an Arai Signet or an Arai Profile. So if you are wearing one of those two helmets and concerned how this thing will fit, it will probably fit your head quite nicely. If, for example, you wear a shoey helmet and you get a pressure point after riding on your forehead, or if you're perhaps on an HJC or some of those other rounder helmets, this particular helmet is a long oval, so it's narrower side to side, longer front to back. So it'll probably fit your head quite nicely. It fits my head beautifully. Inside, the padding is a little thinner than the Arise, um, which has a less of a plush feel but the, the molded styrene shell that actually does the protection fits closer to your skull, feels a little harder, but fits very nicely. Now one thing about this helmet, um, and I'm assuming it's all around the sound cancelling system, is that the manufacturer actually made it snug underneath here, all these chin collar uh, rolls and all the padding and the chin skirt all serve to make for a narrow, very narrow opening around your neck to seal out air, I'm assuming. Challenge is getting the helmet off and on. Compound that problem. Inside, there are ear cups, padded ear cups that sit over your ears that make the, uh, the seal for sound around your, the outside of your ear. And those squeeze into the central space of the helmet to lock around your ears. That makes it even more difficult to get off and on. So what you have to do is basically pull the helmet on. Once it's on, like so, you have to actually reach in, or I do anyway, and straighten out each one of your ears. Now, some of you have to do that already with the helmet that you wear, whether it's uh, whatever, any other brand. Some people have that tight fit around on either side of their head and they have to straighten out their ears with their hands. Now that you have the helmet on, pulling it off poses one additional flaw with the design of the helmet. Look underneath here, there's a chin skirt. This chin skirt, like most helmets, is held in friction fit under the roll molding of the bottom of the helmet. So when I pull this helmet off, watch what happens. It takes the skirt off with it. Um, I guess I could probably always use some, uh, some double-sided tape to strengthen the hold of this molding on this skirt, but that's one flaw with the helmet I found. Now another flaw with the helmet is the design of the shield. Uh, shield seals fine, seals out water fine, uh, seals air fine. However, optically, the bottom of the shield here that basically develops, I guess, the cup for the pin lock system, and this is a pin lock shield, um, is very thick. And what that thickness in this polycarbonate tends to do is it refracts light back up to your face. So you get this, if you're in daylight or even nighttime, actually, uh, you'll get light ref refracting. You get this kind of light ring around the bottom of your helmet. Uh, it's not a big issue, but you do notice it. And it can be distracting at times. So let's talk about airflow. This helmet does not flow a lot of air. Um, there's a vent down here on the chin, which is easily controlled up and down with your thumb. There's a vent on the top, uh, which comes in about here on your head. 
uh, and that's also controlled by your thermal finger. Slides nicely back and forth, and uh, and that's it. I'm assuming that reduced airflow is to reduce the load on the the noise canceling system because obviously air venting does create noise in a helmet, and um, I'm assuming that was to reduce the load on that system. Now. When I initially commented on this, I thought that that would be an issue because in hot weather, I love venting. And coincidentally enough, we've probably had here in Eastern Canada one of the hottest Junes in recent memory, um, easily into 100 degree Fahrenheit. Um, for here, that's hot, 34, 35 degrees Celsius, very, very warm and humid. So that airflow is always nice. This does not flow a lot of air, but I've driven it on two hot days for extended periods of time and um, with the shield slightly open on the bottom to let some air come in, both vents open, uh, my head didn't get horribly hot so I'm not sure if it's, uh, if it's the design of the in inside material to reduce, to make it a little cooler but it wasn't as bad as I thought. The ventilation is not as good as some of the other marks that I've mentioned here before so like the Shui and Arai. Uh, HJC and Shark and those sorts of things, um, but it uh, is not horrible, horrible. It's just probably not highly rated in my in my eyes, um, but I managed with it. So now let's talk about the noise canceling and the intercom system. We'll start with the intercom system because that's easy. It works beautifully. In fact, my bike tends to pair up with this almost as soon as I turn it on, and the navigation system pairs up with it as well. I won't go into the details of how this is paired with the bike, but I had to pair it on two sort of levels. I paired it on one level audio system with the motorcycle itself, primarily for the radio and sound system. And then I did a second pairing with the navigation system for my smartphone. So my smartphone and my navigation system and navigation prompts come through a second sort of channel, if you will, on the helmet. All that pairing takes place very quick and much quicker than my Cardo system does. So I'm very pleased with that. The sound, the audio sound on the music is very good. Very, very good. Very pleased with that as well. The noise canceling system. Um, that works better than I thought. It does not work as well as my Bose Cardo setup that I've shown in other videos that I've been using for several years now and I've grown quite used to it. Uh, it does not kill sound quite as nicely as that. However, since I tend to ride with my shield partly open for wind flow, I do, I do not miss the popping that I would get with the Bose system. And if you have the Bose system, the Bose noise canceling earbuds that I've done a video on and I've talked about over and over and over again, um, on occasion you get a pop every, I don't know, maybe three or four times a minute you get a pop. If there's any wind flow coming in around your face on the side of the helmet towards those earbuds, they pop a little bit, almost like your ear popping when you climb a, climb a mountain. I don't get that with this helmet. That's nice. The noise attenuation is not quite as good as the Bose system, but it's not so bad that I think it needs to be, I think you need to wear a, a noise uh, canceling earbuds, uh, in other words, earplugs. I don't think you need, need to complement this system with any other system at all or any other uh, noise reduction earplugs or anything like that. This does, in my opinion, with the windshield albeit, but in my opinion, this does a fine enough job as it is. And I've done two very long runs on the, uh, on the bike, both at highway speeds. And uh, I wasn't fatigued from the noise at all when I was done. And uh, so I like that. The system itself works very well and I won't repeat it. Uh, it uh, the first video kind of covers off. You have the, the noise cancelling system on one side and the intercom system on the other. I don't use the intercom system so much. There's also built in voice commands. I don't use those either. But I will be posting a video on that eventually because I, I, uh, I've watched a couple other people in person use their voice prompt system through their on their Senna system and it seems to work quite well. So I'm going to try that and see how it works and report back to you on that if you're interested. Lastly, um, I love the things, as I mentioned, the things I like are the fit. I find the electronics work better than my Cardo system. Uh, they, it, with the exception of the noise attenuation, it's not quite as good. 
But the convenience of this helmet is that I don't have wires hanging down. I don't have to put in earplugs and worry about those earplugs coming on lodge as I put on my helmet because that is a tight fit with all that stuff in there. I don't have those problems. I can grab this helmet off the shelf, put it on my head, fix my ears as you saw, but I'm good to go. And I'm good, the battery holds out longer in this than my other system. So I've yet to wear out the battery. Now I haven't done much more than eight hours at a time on this, but I've yet to wear out the battery and uh, that's a plus as well. So overall, I do like this and I'm going to continue to use it as my primary helmet. Um, I'll do the voice prompt video eventually, but otherwise, I'm gonna go for a ride. Anyway, until next time.